The sciatic nerve block is an immensely valuable technique that has many applications in clinical anesthesia. The sciatic nerve can be blocked at a number of locations along its course, but most of these techniques require the patient to be turned on their side or the leg elevated. The anterior approach to the sciatic nerve is attractive because it can be done supine with very minimal patient positioning. This makes it a favorite in trauma anesthesia and other situations where you just don't want to roll the patient over. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy, sonoanatomy, and technique for the anterior sciatic nerve block. The sciatic nerve is derived from the ventral rami of L4, L5, as well as S1, 2, and 3. These combine to form a single large nerve that then leaves the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen. The nerve continues to course down the proximal thigh in the plane between the adductor group of muscles and the hamstrings. If we look deep to the quadriceps muscles in the thigh, we'll first see the adductor longus, then deep to that adductor brevis, and then the aptly named adductor magnus. You can see the chunky sciatic nerve hiding deep to this muscle on top of the long head of the biceps femoris. Here's what we're going to scan for the anterior sciatic block, about 10 centimeters from the inguinal crease approaching from the anterior medial thigh. To get there, it's useful to externally rotate the thigh or frog leg the patient, if possible. We often do these in patients with external fixators on their calf or ankle, and movement can be limited. Here's what a cross section of the thigh looks like at that level. We have the quadriceps muscles here in blue. On the anterior medial side, we have the sartorius muscle and then the three adductor muscles below that, longus, brevis, and magnus. We can appreciate deep to the sartorius the femoral artery and vein, the saphenous nerve, and the nerve to vastus medialis. We'll come back to those later. And finally, we have our hamstrings, biceps femoris and semitendinosus and membranosus. Tucked in between adductor magnus and the hammies below is our sciatic nerve. With our probe positioned on the anterior medial thigh, we can image all of these relevant structures. There are two common approaches to needle insertion, in plane from the lateral aspect and out of plane, straight down. Both approaches aim to land the needle in the fascial plane either side of the nerve and expand that intermuscular fascial plane with local. You can see there are some vessels to negotiate. Both the superficial and profunda femoral vessels can present challenges to needle trajectory, and you're sometimes forced to abandon an in-plane approach for an out of plane, or vice versa. Here's the probe and needle position for the in-plane approach, and here's the positioning for out-of-plane. It's useful to use a curvilinear probe for this block for both the depth and breadth of field it affords. So here's what our scan will look like. Our first obvious landmark is the femur, with its hyperechoic surface casting a large acoustic shadow. We see sartorius near the surface, with a superficial femoral artery centered beneath it. Deep and medial to that is the adductor group of muscles. Depending on your exact position on the thigh, you may be able to see two or three distinct muscles, but it's not critical to identify each one. The hamstrings are the deepest muscle group seen here, and the sciatic nerve is quite obvious in the fascial plane between. Don't forget about the profunda branches which lie adjacent to the femur. It's worthwhile putting on color Doppler to make sure your trajectory is safe. Okay, let's see the in-plane approach. Here's our hyperechoic sciatic nerve at about five centimeters deep. The needle can be seen advancing from the lateral aspect. Sometimes the nerve is just not that obvious, and for that reason we routinely use nerve stimulation as an adjunct to both find the nerve and to make sure we don't end up too close. After we click into the fascial plane between adductor magnus and the hamstring, we aspirate and then give a test injection of saline. Looks good. We see it spreading in the fascial plane superficial to the nerve. We finish the injection and scan up and down a few centimeters to celebrate and to verify we have local all around the nerve. Alright, let's check out the out of plane approach. Same initial image and here's our nerve. Our needle is approaching out of plane, medial to the femoral vessels. You can appreciate the tissue distortion which gives you the vector. We snap into the plane aspirate and begin to inject. Again, we see good fascial plane spread between the two muscles, running up and over the nerve. Notice the nerve becomes much more visible with some local anesthetic contrast beside it. And again, a quick back and forth scan to confirm that we're happy with that pattern of spread and we're good to go. Fifteen to twenty mils of volume is a typical dose that delivers a good effect, and we'll use 0.2 percent ropivacaine for analgesia. If we're after surgical anesthesia, we'll up that to half percent strength. Here's an image showing the osteal, musculofascial, and dermatomal pattern of blockade from the posterior and anterior aspects. 
Anterior sciatic nerve block will anesthetize nearly the entire lower limb below the knee, save for the skin and small ankle joint fibers from the saphenous nerve. We also expect to get some periosteum on the posterior femur, as well as some motor block of the hamstring muscles. We use the anterior sciatic approach in combination with a femoral block for lower limb amputation, ACL repair, and frequently for orthotrauma cases where we want to stay out of the way of the surgical site near the proximal tibia. Again, a big advantage to this approach is you don't have to roll the patient or elevate the limb in an injured patient. Note that the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh is not typically blocked with this approach. And here are some tips for the anterior sciatic nerve block. First, it's great when everything looks amazing on the screen, but that's not going to happen every time. If you're scanning up and down trying to get that nerve to pop out of the background, Use this handy rule to estimate the location. Imagine a line drawn from the femoral artery to the side of the femur. Now go that same distance deeper in line with the femoral artery. You should find the nerve right there, or at least the correct plane. Second, it's common to put the probe on the thigh and not see the nerve right away. There's a good chance the probe is a little too distal. If you find yourself at mid-thigh, slide up towards the groin to get a better view. This block is best done at the proximal third of the femur. If you're planning to block the saphenous nerve at the same time, say for foot and ankle surgery, it's possible to do both with one needle insertion. These authors describe the single penetration dual injection technique where the sciatic nerve is blocked first and the needle withdrawn and redirected beside the femoral artery to block the saphenous. It's a two-for-one deal in the mid-thigh. And finally, we often find ourselves doing this block in combination with a femoral nerve block. In these cases, it's nice to do the femoral first as it anesthetizes the skin puncture site and some of the underlying muscle for the subsequent sciatic nerve block.